Hi, I'm Nezvers and I do stuff. Imagine you are a new aspiring game developer or want to learn a new game engine or framework. Where do you start? In programming there's always many ways to do anything. That's why my motto is do, then do better. You don't know enough to know how to do things as optimally as possible and how to get the best performance. In my past I've been playing with many game creation tools. So I put together a checklist of things that can lead you to understanding how a tool of your choice ticks. Then you should be able to look for next bigger tasks and do better. First thing is to build or launch empty game. In Godot you need at least one scene that will be your starting scene. Godot is node based so you need at least one node and create a scene of it. Let's call it main. And in Godot you can launch a game with F5 or this button or F6 to run the current scene. I will run the project and it will ask to select a starting scene. Congrats, you are now have a running game. Next is to place an object on the screen. For the task I will be using Godot's sprite node. It's a 2D representation of game characters. You can use it for your sprite sheet animations. I'll use a sprite sheet, assign it there, and Godot allows setting sprite to your needs. In my case, I have seven frames horizontally, like that. But you also can see it's blurry, not as sharp pixel art. You can change that on texture setting for this sprite and change it to nearest or you can do that from project settings under textures and set default texture filter to nearest as you see that will be project wide setting let's launch the game <laughs> and you can see a tiny pixel character to change resolution we can go back to settings under display window this is in-game resolution you can use math inside these fields and calculate automatically your needed resolution. There's hidden settings under advanced. It's resolution of your game's window. You can change uh, stretching mode for your game to be scaled or kept as is. Canvas and viewport is useful for 2D games. You can see what each setting does with tooltips when you are hovering over the name. I'll choose keep height. That's it for resolution. The game's resolution is scaled to game's window resolution. The next thing is to know how to move an object around. In Godot you can assign script to these nodes with this icon. I'll use only process. It is called every frame that is drawn. If you are coming from Unity, it is equivalent of Unity's update function. You can read inputs using input singleton that is built in. Ask it if action is pressed. These are built in actions for UI. To see where they are defined, you can go to project, project settings, input map and show built in actions. And here they are. Let's hide it. I'll show you how to make your own. Let's call it move right, enter, move left, move down, move up and add event that is your input event. You can easily press W or up or whatever input you want. Godot supports physical keycode. That means even if you give someone that use alternative keyboard layout, placement of the key will be the same. I'll add the rest. And now I can rename. I like using a little math trick to get a direction from these inputs. I convert inputs into integers. That means if the right input is pressed, it will have true or false, but it's converted to integer. That means it will be one or zero. And I subtract a positive direction with negative direction. Same for down, which is positive and up is negative. And the result 
result I can press positive and negative direction together and that will sum up to zero. To actually move the object it has a position variable built in so I can just have a value of the current position plus a direction. Let's check it out with F5 and it's moving. An extra tip is that Godot allows exposing your variables to inspector that's here like export a new variable speed in such situation you need to define a type for variable it's float save it then click on the node and you will see exposed variable it's currently zero let's make it 120 i'll multiply the direction to keep everything frame independent i'll multiply it with with delta time let's launch it I recommend to become familiar and efficient using Godot's manual. You can do that right from the Godot editor by control, clicking on built-in variable or function or class name, like clicking on sprite 2D. You can see it is inheriting from node 2D, which is inheriting from canvas item, which inherits from node, which inherits from object. And also there's my script that's inheriting from sprite2d and it even shows my variables as a documentation. If you want to add extra documentation you can put double hashtag like that. Let's save it. As you can see there's a new description about speed variable. You can also access the manual through this button. You can search pretty much anything like in this situation it found another process function which is for animation node but that's not what we need is something for sprite sprite inherits from node you can see a bit lower there's this process we can double click and read everything you need the next thing is to know how to create an object in runtime let's create a new sprite this time I'll be using the iconic icon of Godot. Let's size it smaller by clicking on the node. And in the inspector transform section you can access its scaling. Like that. And to be able to create it at the runtime we need to save it as a scene. You can right click and save branch as scene. Save it. We can remove it from our scene. Then we need to create a node that will be taking care of spawning. Since I want to use mouse position, I need to use node 2D or control, which is for UI, because they have access to a viewport and that is allowing them to read mouse position. Add a script. I'll call it spawner. I'll remove these templated functions. First thing first, export a variable for packed scene. That's the type of these saved scenes. Let's save it and you can see it's here exposed and drag the saved icon sprite scene. Save it. You can read Godot's input not only through a singleton input, but if you are defining a function with input or unhandled input this automatically enables input reading if you are defining unhandled input it is uh, receiving the input last that is allowing GUI or regular input to disable further input propagation as you can see I am calling a function and Godot is saying that there is no function like that that's because it's going to be a custom function and that function in the input function the Godot is passing every input event into it as an argument. You can then ask through a function if this action is pressed. I haven't created this action so it will report in console that there is no such action. So let's create one. And let's add events for mouse. Mouse, left mouse button. Okay, right mouse button. 
So if this event is pressed, it will be calling the new colored sprite function. It's calling a function on this packed scene to instantiate, basically create a new instance out of that saved scene. Then I can set its global position to global position of mouse. Then for that new node to be active, it needs to be added to a scene tree. That's basically all nodes together that is making your game. And that is done by adding as child this new instance. Let's try it out. Whenever I press left button, a new instance is created. The next thing in my list is to know how to remove objects. Let's create another node that's also node 2D because I want to use mouse position. This will be spawner and this will be remover. Add a script to lowercase, remove templated code. The one way I want to present to you how to do that is to go into that sprites scene, click on the root node and there's a section for nodes and groups. You can assign it a group. That means it is possible to co collect all nodes that is in this group. So let's go to script remover. One thing is I want a distance constant. This time I'm using unhandled input because I want to show you one thing later. It works exactly the same as just input. I'm asking to the event if action is pressed mouse right. In that case I'm getting mouse global position. I'm collecting nodes in that group. To do that you need to get a scene tree by calling method function get tree and there is a function get nodes in group and the same name we used for group name. Then using a for loop for each element I'm giving variable name node and this is this array of those nodes. So I'm checking the distance from mouse position to that node's global position. In this way you can get a difference from positions. Then using a function length on that vector and comparing it against distance and the very first node that's less distance to mouse than my constant 16 pixels then I'm marking that node to be freed. It's best to use query free because there is possibility some code is actively using that node. When all processes are done this node will be freed. Since I want to remove just one closest to mouse I'm breaking the for loop and it is not checking any more other nodes. Let's save it and launch. Let's create a Let's create some nodes and with the right click I'm clicking around around and when I'm clicking on the sprite its distance is smaller than distance variable. Then I can remove created nodes. To show you the input hierarchy, let's go to the spawner and here after after checking if mouse left is pressed, you can swallow any input event that's happening. Basically you can check if this action pressed, it does what it needs and all the times after that every event gets swallowed. And because input function has higher priority, the unhandled input won't receive any. To demonstrate that, I, I'm launching the game and creating some nodes. And this time I'm clicking right click right on this, this node. And it's not disappearing because input has swallowed the event. Next thing is to put a text on the screen. For that Godot has GUI nodes. Every GUI node will be control or inheriting from it. But label is used for text. Using label just like that in your scene has a drawback because it is bound to position relative to its parent. To demonstrate that I'll be creating a camera. It is enabled and now launching the scene you can see that player moving is moving away from the text. For that Godot has a canvas layer node which is allowing to separate position from your scene. This way the text will be always on the screen.
Next thing in my list is to put a button on your screen. And let's move it. And add a script. This time you can choose empty script. Button has a neat function that is called whenever you press the button. To show it, let's create a console printout. Let's launch the game. And when I click on the button, you can see a text printing in console. Next thing is to change game scenes. To achieve that, I'll expose a variable for a scene that's packed and also a file path for a scene because there are two ways how you can change game scenes. For demonstration purpose, I'll be showing you both use cases. If you have assigned a packed scene to this variable, it will trigger this command. First thing, you need to get a scene tree. Then tell it change scene to packed and use that packed scene. Otherwise, it will check if file path is not empty. Then code is calling the scene tree and telling it to change scene to a file by using the file path. To demonstrate that, I need to create an alternative game scene. Let's do that by duplicating it out and open it to make something different so you know if the game scene has been changed. For the main scene, I'll be using a packed scene, this new alternative scene. And in the alternative, let's call it... For the alternative one, I'll be using a file path. You can get a file path by right-clicking, copy path, and just copy it here. And that's it. When you launch the game, as you can see, this is the main scene. And now it is the alternative game scene. We can press it again and we are back in the main scene. When game scene is changed, it is deleting the previous scene and loads in the new one. I'm leaving out the basics for physics because I'm planning to do a series of videos where some game frameworks doesn't have a built-in physics implementation and you have to make custom physics yourself. Also, I think that making physics work in Godot should be a part of your learning experience. I hope this video showed you that you shouldn't be afraid of learning game engines and give you some kickstart power to explore Godot or even other game engines in this same approach by learning how to do just basics then take it further. I hope you like this video and see you next time.